Seeking Cinderella by Deirdre Dwyer. Presented by Broken Crow in association with Garter Lane Art Centre. Episode 3 Pumpkin Party. At Hotel Cara, everyone was working extremely hard. Madame Michelle's plan was to use Annabelle and Annika's 16th birthday party as a showcase for what the Hotel Cara could be. Everyone had a job to do. Even Cara's dad, Liam, had been pulled out from behind his desk and was working with Madame Michelle in the dining room. Where do you want these glasses, Michelle? Stack them over by the flower garlands, Liam. And then, can you get the balloons? Oh, there you are, Sandrine. I wonder if you'd be free to help me finish decorating the dining room. But of course, I'm just helping Cara with her homework. We have lots to do. You go ahead if you want, Sandrine. No, no, I I will stay with you until it's all done, mon petit chou. What is left? Some spellings? Alors, how do you spell presents? P or E S E N T S? Presence? P or E S E N C. Bien. And now, can you put them into a sentence together for me, still to play? The guests brought presents and filled the room with their presents. How's that? Ah, oh, excellent. That will be just as the party is, eh? Presents for Annika and Annabelle. Oh, I do hope that there will be some beautiful gifts for the girls. All their school friends are coming. And I hope the fact that it is close to Christmas means people won't try to get away with one gift for both occasions. And even worse, sometimes people think it is fair to give one gift for the two girls to share. Are you ready now, Sandrine? Oui, madame, j'arrive. Ça va, Cara? Is that the last of the homework? Why don't you go see how Papa is doing? Hi, Dad. Hiya, love. Can you bring these balloons into Michelle? Oh, I was hoping to hang out with you. Sorry, pet. No time. We're on a mission. In fact, can you bring these ribbons down to Laurent in the garage? Hi, Laurent. Dad asked me to give you these. Ribbons? For the bonnet, I suppose. Next, I need to wash the car from top to bottom and try to figure out how to get your mother's car back on the road. No one has driven it for years. And we will need to hire another driver for the day because Madame Michelle has requested that we collect all the guests before the party and bring them back after. Can you give this list to Eva? A man in a dark suit and sunglasses just dropped it off. Madame Eva was exhausted. Oh, another list of security requirements. Oh, Cara, the guest list for Annabelle and Annika's party. Half the attendees seem to be the children of pop stars and actors. The other half, children of politicians and journalists. They all want to come and visit, check out the staff and the guests. Thank goodness there hasn't been any more snow. And while you pass, can you give this stack of napkins to Erica? In the kitchen, Erica was up to 90. Thanks for those. Just popped them over there. I'm up to my eyes here. We've not used this cutlery for years. 200 people, Cara. And it all has to be polished. Can I help? I know you mean well, but you don't have, how can I put it, the best attention to detail. I'll be quicker on my own. Thanks, though. Cara sighed and slowly climbed the stairs up to her room at the top of the hotel and into her bed. I know, I know it's too early for bed, but what else am I supposed to do? Everyone is busy and no one has time for me. I wish this party wasn't happening. I wish Annabelle and Annika would go away and I wish everything could go on as it was before Dad met stupid Madame Michelle. The morning of the party arrived and the kitchen of Chez JC was a buzz and Hiroto was exhausted. Move out of the way. Watch your back. Hot bot's coming through. I've got a marinade ready to go. Who is coming to get it? Hurry up, Hiroto. Those macarons won't pack themselves. That there is the dessert trays. Perfect. I'll just stack them into these boxes here. And when no one is looking, I'll just stack in a layer of my special meringues. Done. These are ready to go, Jean-Claude. All ship shape. It had been Hiroto's job to pack up the trays of food. 
and he'd managed to sneak in some of his own creations in every section. He had stayed up all night in the kitchen. He knew you couldn't use any ingredients that would be missed, but having noticed 20 pumpkins that were destined for the compost bin, he chopped, simmered and sautéed, creating a vat of extraordinary pumpkin soup, a tray of tiny and exquisite pumpkin risotto, some delicate pumpkin pies and a mound of scented pumpkin meringues. He couldn't wait to watch from the server's entrance to see how the party goers enjoyed his food. The guests had begun to arrive, but Cara would not come out of her room. Cara, that's enough now. It's time for you to make an appearance. I'm not going. Not without Dusty and Asha, and you can't make me. I don't understand this. I thought you liked Annika and Annabelle. Did you, Dad? Did you really? Well, I'm so glad you've been paying attention. I hate them and their stupid mother. I will not put up with this kind of talk. What would your mother say? She'd say, you don't have to do things you don't want to. But she'd follow it up with, as long as you give it a try. She was talking about green beans, Dad. Not going to a stupid party. The principle is the same. So now, I need you to get out here and try to enjoy the party. Michelle has been asking for you. Please, Dad. Don't make me go without the mice. I don't know anyone. They're all 16 and 17 and they think they're so cool. Even if I could bring the mice for company, it wouldn't be so bad. You know Michelle is terrified of the mice. Please, Cara, do it for me. I just want this party to go smoothly. If it is more important to you that they have a good time, even if it makes me miserable, I'll do it. I'll come down. Ah, no. It isn't like that, Cara. No. Are you sure? Well, it certainly feels like it. You know there's a lot at stake with this party. Fine. I'll see you downstairs, Dad. But I didn't say how long I'd stay. I'm just going to show my face, then I'm coming straight back up here. Her father had finally made it clear who was more important to him. Cara! These were the thoughts swirling around in Cara's mind as she swung through the double kitchen doors and walked straight into Hiroto, who was carrying his pot of pumpkin soup. Oh no! Are you okay? Do I look okay? Or do I look like a person drenched in a lukewarm soup? Well, to be honest, more like the soup person. Oh! It's you! Are you here for the party? Yes. Were you on your way to get changed? No. I was just delivering this soup to the heated soup server. That was very good of you. Guests don't usually help. Here, let me give you a hand. A slippery hand? Oh! This is yum! Dad must have hired some good cook. Your dad? Is this your party? No, it's for the twins. My... my dad's... friend's daughters. We're just hosting it here. This is our hotel. This soup is really lovely! Your hotel? Right? I'd better be going back to the kitchen to clean up. No, it's all my fault. And besides, guests shouldn't have to do that. And I have to give you back your Cinderella. It's up in my room. You kept it for me? I've gone back to visit the Perot statue a few times. I wondered if I'd see you there again, in case you came back too. I've been bringing it to school, but never saw you. I'll give it back to you after we clean you up. Do you have a change of clothes? No, just this. Well, I'm sure we have something in the lost property that'll work. Come with me. But I've got to... I mean, I need to head back. Nonsense! Hardly any of the other guests are here yet. No, you don't understand. I won't hear of it. Right, lost property. Here's a nice shirt that looks like it'll fit. And these trousers might work on you. But like I say, I couldn't possibly. People always leave things behind them, hanging on the back of bathroom doors or under beds. And this blue tie. Ooh, and what about this snazzy velvet jacket? Looks like it will fit just right. I've never owned anything like that. I'll leave you here to get changed. No, really, you don't understand. Now what am I going to do? John claude if I don't get back... Hiroto looked at the beautiful clothes. Kara had clearly misunderstood who he was. She had assumed he was just another one of the normal children who had been dropped off by their parents. He had a choice. He could either take himself and his soup-drenched clothes back to the kitchen or, just for a little while, he could dress up and go to the party. 
He hesitated only for one second before stripping off his t-shirt and slipping into the pale purple shirt. It smelt of clean washing powder and fitted him like a glove. Well, don't you look smart. Thank you. It's great to see you again. Weird that I haven't seen you around school. Which class are you? Um, John Claude's. You must be in the other building, so. Yeah. Are you ready? I suppose we'd better get this over with. Get what over with? The party. Right, of course. Here we go. Oh, wow. This is so cool. What? It's awesome. I've never seen so many balloons in one place. I suppose. And the chocolate fountain? It's all her idea. Her there. Madame Michelle. She's Annabelle and Annika's mom. You know. Oh, yeah. The twins' birthday. She wants to move in here and then every last trace of my mom will be cleaned away. Your mom? Where is she? She died. I I thought everyone in school knew that. I've heard them whispering. I didn't know. When did she? Two years ago. That's horrible. I'm sorry. Thanks. Cara, there you are. I'm glad you're here. I didn't have much choice. It would be really great. If you could put a smile on your face, pet. I said I'd come. I didn't say I'd smile. Well, this might do it. Have you tasted any of the tiny risottos? I haven't tasted anything so good since your mum's cooking. No. Oh, try it, Kara. And who's this? I'm Liam, Kara's dad. I'm Hiroto. Go on, taste it, Kara. Fine, but only because it smells really good. Mmm, wow, this is good. Really? Yes. And try these little pastry parcels. Unreal! Do you really think so? Yes. We ordered the classics, but the little bites are the best things on offer. Everyone agrees. Cara, there you are. We were waiting for you to cut the cake. Why? Just go ahead. Right. Is this your friend? Yes, this is Hiroto. He's in school with us. That's just like ye not to know someone who you actually asked to your person. I'm sorry. Hi, Hiroto. Lovely to meet you. We've never met any of Kara's friends before. Let's go over here, Hiroto. Goodbye. Nice to meet you. And happy birthday. They seem nice. 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 They want to move in here and take over everything. Kara, I think I have to tell you something. I'm not who you think I am. Huh? I don't go to your school. I don't go to any school. I don't school. understand. You were on our school trip. No, I wasn't. I met you at the statue by coincidence. I live and work at Che JC. Can I have everyone's attention, please? Over here. Yes. Yes, I over want here. To be a chef. I. It's time Toto, for the I'm twins sorry. to cut the cake. Properly. We Wait, might all minute. sing together. It was just then, in the hustle and bustle of the cake cutting, that Jean Claude strode into the dining room. Before Hiroto could duck down, the head chef's gaze landed on him. It slowly took in Hiroto's finery. Then he raised his hand and beckoned with his finger. Hiroto turned and followed Jean-Claude back to the kitchen. What is the meaning of this? Where have you been? And why are you dressed like that? There was an accident with a pot of soup. Soup? The only soup on my menu was French onion, and that is out there practically untouched. Where did all those delightful little bites that they are eating come from? I went for a walk through the dining room, expecting to be congratulated on the classical French food, and all they can talk about is their pumpkin pies. That isn't the food I prepared. But they seem so happy, Jean-Claude. I think it's a big success. What did you do? I... Just did a little tweaking. Tweaking? My work does not require tweaking. How dare you? But they love it. They love my food. That's it. Shaming me and putting the reputation of my restaurant on the line. That is it, Hiroto. You're fired. Don't you dare darken the door of my restaurant. But Jean-Claude... I don't want to hear it. Get out of my sight. And with a quick look behind him over his shoulder... Hiroto headed for the stairs and out into the cold Parisian evening. You have been listening to the voices of Sophia Furlong, David Marchant, Devlin Lunergan, Aideen Wilde, 
Joe Marr, Nicholas Cavanagh, Jackie Kelleher and Deirdre Dwyer, and the music of Anthony O'Dwyer. For further information about the cast and crew, go to DeirdreDwyer.com. The illustrator for episode three, Pumpkin Party, was Kate Eskelin. Seeking Cinderella was written while Deirdre was in residence at the Irish Cultural Centre in Paris in November 2021, supported by Driacht Blanchardstown. It was recorded and made in Waterford in the winter of 2022 and was only possible thanks to the support of the Arts Council of Ireland, Creative Waterford, Waterford City and County Council Arts Office and the Everyman Cork. <laughs>